My, uh, it just simply tells you that you're at the right place. Yes. <laughs> that, by the way, is Lake Olathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Beautiful. Well, uh, this is a spoiler alert. That is not a picture that one of us took. However, however we did go to that falls. The, the person that took this picture's name is Mickey Shannon. And so I want to make sure that I tell his name. Okay, Jonathan. <clears throat> I think we got going on this because Mark saw something on Facebook from a friend about Kansas waterfalls. And so we thought, hey, maybe this is a way to get out of the house and not be around people, but be in nature. And um, these are the three sites that we looked at. And there are many more, as Mark will tell me. But the top 10 Kansas waterfalls travel Kansas is the one that has the pictures by Mickey Shannon, if I'm correct. Okay. And on his site, even though he lists just 10 Kansas waterfalls, down below in that website, there's a list of a whole lot more plus the map of where they're located. And it's kind of a strange title to, to, for him to have put on there because there's, there, you can find more. But the beautiful photograph you just saw which was taken by him, each of his waterfall pictures look about as nice as that. Some were taken at night under starlight, which you got to know what you're doing with a camera to get the Milky Way and an illuminated waterfall at night. But uh, the, you know, I think you'll enjoy that website with his 10 waterfalls because his pictures are probably the best that are among the three that we show here. And as Libby mentioned, there are numerous other websites that talk about Kansas waterfalls. Is it okay if we go on or does someone want us to wait? Recorded. I can, I can actually post these three uh, in the JCCRA Facebook page too. So if people want to reference them later on. Okay. All righty. So, Jonathan, are you recording these? Uh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, I had somebody ask if it was going to be recorded because they kept, they were getting their uh, COVID shot during the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it will be recorded and posted. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, obviously a map of Kansas. Then I started uh, just putting a, a mark on the ones that were on those sites that I showed you a moment ago. And some of these waterfalls are on several, several lists. But this gives you an idea where you, the waterfalls are. And when Mark and I took these trips, we did not really go south of Wichita because we wanted these all to be one day comfortable trips because we weren't going to stay in a hotel or a motel anywhere. So it, this just kind of gives you an idea. And um, you can see that they're all in eastern Kansas. You'll notice that some of them are rather close together. So it's possible to see two waterfalls in a single day trip. Hey, Chris. We tried to do that. And some of the waterfalls, I'm Birgit, sorry. Birgit said something. Oh. No, no, no I'm sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. we, um, we had to be thinking about this as being a good way to get out in nature. And so we knew we weren't going to see anything that was like Multnomah Falls <laughs> or Niagara Falls. And some of the falls were actually dry because we started this adventure in June and went through November. So we're kind of looking forward to when it does get warmer because we think, you know, the waterfalls will be, will be better in the springtime. And you've just given me a great segue. You'll notice that in the Kansas City area that there are no black dots. However, we found two that are locally in the Kansas City area and one of them, which we kind of knew about but didn't know that there were two right near our home, we'll talk about pretty soon. Those are both on Cedar Creek. 
in Olathe. So are you getting anything else? Yeah, I wanna say uh, we learned a lot about the county fishing lakes in Kansas. I had no idea that there were so many. And we also, Mark was telling me that nearly 100% of the lakes in Kansas are man-made. So it's all that learning experience too. Usually when we got to the uh, waterfall locale, we would be walking across the earthen dam and then scampering down to, uh, you know, on rocky paths to where the waterfalls are. So uh, it was interesting that th that was kind of a constant. Um, oh yeah, we also um, made sure that on most of these days, we found a fun place to eat. We picked it up and ate in our car or ate somewhere else fun. So, okay, Jonathan. Does this look familiar to anyone? Mm -hmm. This uh, is Pil Pillsbury. Yes, Pillsbury Crossing. So we we met. That's my son there in the white shirt and his wife and the two grandchildren. And we have been to Pillsbury Crossing quite a few times. And it's fun to go with the grandkids because they love having their swimsuits on and wading around in that water there on the, the limestone shelving, that geological formation. Uh, so you can see where they're walking and then you can see the waterfall in the foreground and then on the far left, you can, that's a roadway and you can drive across this. So it's got a lot of different aspects to it. Uh, and in fact, on the far left, which you cannot see, uh, people actually swim in that area, though I think they're not supposed to be doing that. And you could also put in a canoe or something, though we don't know how far it will go. So, but it's fun people use it as a water hole. And the discouragement is, is that supposedly there are snapping turtles in there. So you don't want to get your toes nipped off, but there it is. Uh, Kansas Rangers do monitor the, the place because it, it can become kind of a party cove for the, for Kansas State University kids who come down there and drink a lot. We've always, when we've been there, it's always been virtually like this, not very many people at all. And it is kind of fun to drive through the two inch deep water across to the roadway, which is why they call it Pillsbury Crossing. Libby, where is it located? Yes, it's not, it's Southeast of Manhattan, Kansas. So if you take the exit to the North for Wamigo, when you get to the river bottom, area of the road, there is a, a left-hand turn going west. And you'll see where there's a sign that says, see the Beecher Bible Church. And so on that roadway, going past Zeandale, which along the way, there is this incredibly picturesque stone farm, stone buildings, stone barn, stone house. It's not too far beyond that, maybe seven or eight miles. And I think that probably uh, using Google Maps will get you there. Okay, Jonathan. This is also Pillsbury Crossing. You can see the fun that people are having. You can see a car heading across the, uh, the water. But there's always a few inches of water to be uh, waiting in, and, uh, and it's fun. And it's really, really clean water, too, as it, as it flows across the shelving. Uh, it's kind of crystal clear. There's no odor. And the falls itself, this is one of the smaller ones, but it's about a six-footer. And the kids like to see the little tiny fish that are about, you know, a half an inch long swimming. You put your nose down towards the water and see all that. So they are fry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready for the next one. You can see that there's water coming down. 
but not a lot. And so I'm standing on the waterfall itself. We went uh, the last day of July. This is Geary Falls, which is 10 miles south of Junction City. So this one would be an easy one to see in conjunction with Pillsbury Crossing because they're, they're not more than 15 or 16 miles apart. I think there's another picture of this. So it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a 50 footer. And we were, we were happy to just have water. And on that day, we decided to go to Council Grove to eat, to get something to eat. And we ate on the porch at the historic Trail Days Cafe. Do you have anything to say about that? Well, it's a converted gas station that was made out of, out of limestone. It's two stories. And it is... Uh, it, you know, it dates from like the 1930s, that type of, you know, the old highway uh, filling station that is not a, you know, a chain. And so they've converted this into kind of a museum and a restaurant, and they have kind of unique Kansas foods. They had some that were based on Native American cuisine, and it was good. It was a good place to eat. We did not go into the museum that day, given COVID, though we did head into their bathroom upstairs. It was very interesting. Okay, next one. Oh, there we are. Sorry, <laughs> that's <laughs> a Trail Days Cafe. All righty, <laughs> we're ready for the next one. Okay, one day we headed up um, to look for waterfalls in various areas north of Kansas City and uh, found that we could not find them. So we went to uh, Atchison and there's Mark next to Amelia Earhart. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. The reason we can't find some of them is we discovered that a few were on private land and on that website that Mickey Shannon has, when he describes some of these waterfall pictures, he'll mention that, well, this is on private land and the owner will allow you to go on there, but you need to check in with them. So we didn't bother. And just some are, are kind of difficult to find. So after that, we went over to St. Joseph and we had lunch in a really neat, uh, it was a nice restaurant. We didn't eat in the restaurant. Right. We right. never do that. We took, we took the food out and then found a place nearby that was in an open, near a park and ate it there. Okay, next one. <clears throat> okay, this day we went down near Fort Scott and this uh, waterfall is kind of a bust. There's, a, there's water, but you can't even see that it's coming through the rock or from the top. Uh, this is called Bourbon Falls, and it was at Bourbon County State Fishing Lake in Marion, Kansas, or near Marion, Kansas. And then the next picture, same day, <coughs> this is called Rock Creek Falls. It's just south of Fort Scott. I don't know, how big do you think that was? Well, it was, it had a few shelving drops and this was a, was the better photograph of it, but there was another one, which of course we couldn't, we can't get every, every part of the fall in the water, in the, in the photograph. And it's just beyond the dam outlet from Bourbon State Fishing Lake. And that day, go ahead, Jonathan. Oh, another one. Okay, here's a better view of the Rock mm -hmm. Creek Falls. So pretty good fall, several levels. Several series of like three to four foot drops into the creek. And this was the middle of August. So it ought to really be spectacular at some point in the spring. Okay. 
So we decided since we were in Fort Scott that we would go to the fort. And so we took a walking tour uh, ourselves just around it. It was terribly, terribly hot that day, but it was still interesting to see. So there's one shot. Yeah, that's the stables of that military post, which was in the, in the time period of the US Dragoons along the frontier where there were forts all the way from Minnesota to Texas, keeping the uh, Euro settlers out of the Indian territories, which were west of that line. Fort Scott is a really unique example of a pre-Civil War antebellum fort and the town itself. It's been years since I've been to Fort Scott. I was so impressed with the look and how neat the downtown looks. It's, it's kind of a, a fun place to visit. And of course, the place that we ate was a- And it's coming up. Next slide. No, not quite. We got a couple oh. more slides of the fort, I think. We're ready. And then another one. Hear the, uh, or have the cannon go off while you were there? No. It is a National Park Service site. And uh, one thing about this post is it never had more than two to 300, uh, two to 300 uh, army personnel based there. And generally what they had was half of them would be at the post and the other half would be out on patrol, um, keeping peace between the, uh, the people who were slowly moving into Kansas and the tribes that were there. Uh, a pretty important function at that time. Okay, next one. I don't know if with COVID, if they're still firing off a cannon, but we were there sometime, uh, maybe a year or so ago. And that's kind of fun to, to hear the volume of that cannon being fired. Wow. So did you plan ahead so you could be there then? No, we stumbled on it. We stumbled on it, got there just, I think it was like at two o'clock in the afternoon firing and we just walked in just as it was, uh, they were getting ready to set up. And so we were just lucky. Nice. As we make our, our drive around Kansas, we'll, I just, I'm always now seeking out these small towns that I've never been to just to see what they look like. And on a lot of them, if they're on a state highway, even that state highway kind of bypasses at least one edge of the town. So I always say, let's see what the main street looks like. And it's, it's kind of discouraging that, you hate to say that some of these towns look like they have seen better days and will never come back. Uh, a few of them though, look like there's some there's, they still have some vibrancy. And, and what I said a few moments ago about Fort Scott's look, you can just see a little bit of their, of the architecture, which is there. And there aren't very many boarded up buildings and it's very, very uh, inviting as a, as a city. And this is where we uh, picked up our lunch and uh, took it over and ate in our car before we went to the fort. So I guess these are a little out of order, but uh, I usually look at uh, TripAdvisor to see about where to eat. And this was a good recommendation, a good recommendation. Um, old fashioned grill, the hamburgers were wonderful. Hamburgers, uh, Reuben's, tenderloins, that <laughs> type, of, that type of, of diner type food. Okay, now before we go to the next picture, I need to explain that one day we were out running errands and we thought, Oh, let's see if there's, remember there was supposed to be a waterfall in Miriam. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So this is at 5191 Miriam Drive in Miriam. And we're not looking at the falls right now, but it, this is right off the, uh, the parking lot. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. And there were kids playing and, you know, with their, their parents were there and Maybe. yeah. And this was in um, the mid, mid August. So still water there it was really fun. And it's about a four footer. 
<laughs> it's called Turkey Falls. Okay, before we, before we go on, the next one, we had decided to go to Alma City Lake Falls. And this is another county made lake. And so we met my, my son and his family. And so go ahead to the next slide. And there we are. And over on the left, that is the falls. So, mm. uh-huh. <laughs> it has several, several drops. <laughs> Not a lot of water. Huh? No, no water there, except for a little bit down below. Okay, next slide. So that's the, that's the falls, and, you know, kind of scummy and no water really coming. So sometimes they're a bust, but it was fun to go. And while we were there, we went over and the kids played on the edge of the water at the lake and we, they, we skipped rocks and stuff. So we always tried to make, make it into a fun day, even if it, uh, the falls were kind of a bust. Okay, next one. This, uh, you can't see much of the waterfall right now, but uh, you can see the water. This is Angel Falls in Lansing. And the easiest way to get there is to park at the St. Francis, I don't know how to say this, St. Francis de Sales Church. You park in their parking lot and then you can get on the Angel Falls Trail, which is a wonderfully paved walkway and uh, you walk a ways and then pretty soon you scamper off off the trail a little bit and cross a bridge. Okay. And it's the bridge Didn't remember goes over that. this. And go ahead and go to the next slide. So that's oh. that's that falls. Hmm? Another four footer. Oh, another four footer, he says. So that's called the Angel Falls. And we were going to uh, go to the Wakarusa Falls in Lawrence, but we couldn't find it. And then there was a, we thought we were in the right place, but the path was blocked. So we called uh, Angel Falls good enough for the day. And we went into Leavenworth and uh, got food from the Pullman Place restaurant. And it was really fun that day because we took our food and we sat on a, a park bench on the Esplanade overlooking the Missouri River and mm. while we were watching the river go by. So I would recommend just going for the, for the meal. <laughs> it was fun. Or just the place to eat your meal. Okay. Oh, there we are on the Esplanade. There's Mark with his crazy hair. He wasn't getting a haircut for a while. <laughs> <laughs> really doing it to make a point, but it was kind mm -hmm. of fun. I haven't had hair that long since I was in my 20s. So. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, this is that we headed to uh, Prather Creek Falls, P-R-A-T-H-E-R, -E like Bob Prather sometimes also called Chase Lake Falls. And uh, it's near Cottonwood Falls. And this was the picture, well, when you see the, the waterfall, this was the picture that we had at the very beginning that Mickey Shannon took. And um, so disclaimer, this was in at the end of September. So though the falls were there, this was the, one of the neatest things is that we headed on the road towards uh, you know, the falls area and we went all the way till the end and the monarchs were out that day. This was uh, September 24th. And so they were all over the place and it was just so peaceful. Nobody else was around. And uh, so even if we weren't gonna see a waterfall, this was worth it in itself. So go ahead to the next no, one. No, not wait. I'm going to try and... They can't see it because... I'm getting there to the camera. Mm -hmm. What is... It? Oh, the, the movie. <laughs> the, the monarchs were everywhere. There were 
hundreds upon hundreds and they were fluttering and it was during their migration. So if you, mm -hmm. you get an idea. At the end of September. Okay, next one. You think we ought to go back at the end of September to see it next year? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there we are, there's some more. And uh, another wonderful thing that you know you can experience at times like this in quiet is the rustling of the cottonwood leaves. It's just very, very peaceful and wonderful. It lowers my blood pressure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. So we stayed there quite a while. Just one shot of the of the wildflowers that were on the earthen dam that I said that we usually walked across to get see. So after we watched the monarchs, then we drove the car back to the dam area. We walked across the earthen dam. And next picture. Then we walked along this dry creek bed. It almost seemed like slabs of cement. It was so hard. So we're wondering, are there going to be falls or not? But still, it was a neat experience. A word that kept on going through my mind was dry wadi. Dry <laughs> wadi. <laughs> and it certainly looked like it. Yep. Okay, next one. So we did finally find it, again, scampering down kind of a rocky little path. And this is what it looked like on that day. So we didn't think that that was too bad because we were at the end of September. Um, again, this is Prather Creek, Chase Lake Falls, and that's the one that Mickey Shannon's, Mickey Shannon's picture was at the beginning. So I think this can be quite spectacular, but we were happy to see water. Okay, next one. I think we have three pictures of the falls. Mm. Okay, oh, there we are. Okay, I would definitely recommend that, Cottonwood Falls area. Oh, we decided to go to Cottonwood Falls to eat that day and we went to the Grand Central Hotel and, and grill. So if you haven't eaten at the grill, we went outside, mm. ate outside of course. Okay, now this picture is very close to us. For those of you that don't live in Olathe, I don't know if you're aware of the fact that Olathe has really worked on the Olathe Lake Park and it is amazing now. So this is one of the waterfalls. I believe it's man-made, but it's still wonderful. It is man-made. Yeah, it's within the park. It's nothing more than a fountain, <laughs> but looks nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's close to us, about a mile and a half away. Okay, one next picture. Okay, now that is um, Cedar, Cedar Creek Falls. Is that Cedar Creek or Cedar? Cedar Creek Falls. Cedar Creek Falls. So that's the one that you can see off of Dennis. Uh -huh. All right, I get them confused. So actually, we went last week. I mean, it's hard to imagine as cold as it is today, but I think it was last Monday or Tuesday when we had weather in the 50s and Mark and I went to, um, to see this and it's just off Dennis on the south end of um, Olathe, Olathe, Par Olathe Lake Park. We had to get a file stock photograph for you to see this one. Obviously <laughs> this is at another time of the year mm -hmm. and we could not determine whether this falls is man-made or not. Uh, because it's so straight in its, in its uh, profile, and there's also kind of a tunnel underneath the fall itself, we we're wondering if this is somehow artificially constructed, but it does look like all native stone. So there is some concreting done on the left side of this picture. Maybe that's been, been done to uh, stabilize the, uh, the face. I don't know, but that's Cedar Creek Falls. That's the nearest falls to our house. Okay, next one. That is back inside Olathe Lake Park again, and, and Mark calls this the Cascade. It's fun. It is completely man-made, but it's lovely, and the kids love playing in it. 
and it runs for mm -hmm. several hundred yards from the top of the hill emptying into the lake down below and it's uh it runs through a a water fountain area that has features for kids kind of like you see down at crown center or other places where the water is on a program and it it uh you know, the, 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 the spurts arc and they do things where the kids run and play in it. Whereabouts is the Lake, the lake Park? Off of 135th west of K7 or Santa Fe. Excuse me, not Santa Fe. It's called Parker when it runs through across I uh, 135th Street. So just a few miles west of that intersection of K7 and Santa Fe, uh, Olathe Lake will, Park will be on your left on the south side. Oh, okay. Do you know where the Prairie Center is, Jonathan? Uh, no, we've been out to Heritage Park and we know where Ernie Miller is. It sounds like that's this is a little further this south. This is west. south and west of uh, Ernie Miller. Okay. I just had not heard of it before. Yeah. Olathe Lake. Yeah, and the lake itself, we don't have any pictures of the lake, but it's it's been there for a long time. And they have really, really updated the whole park and it's very peaceful and wonderful. Okay, next one. Oh, that is uh, in our subdivision, completely man-made, but we, we love it. That is, um, let's see. It's forest. It, yeah, it's just off of Claire and 119th coming into our subdivision area. It's impressive <laughs> and natural looking, but it is anything but. It is the <laughs> backdrop for all kinds of photographs now that people are taking when they get married. Mm -hmm. when they graduate from high school or college or they are going to homecoming. In, and there's many times, because it's one of the major ways that we get back to our home, there are photographers there doing professional uh, photography work for people. It's a, it's a real attraction in that regard. And, it's, and it, the roadway is right to the left here of the picture. So, you know, it's very accessible. It's about 50 feet tall. It's pretty impressive. It's not running now. <laughs> no. Okay, next and last picture. This is the one we did last week, or this is one of the ones we did last week. We went to Cedar Lake Park, which is at 153rd and Lone Elm. Lone Elm is another name for K7. And uh, if you go into the park and just go all the way to the end, once again, you've got your earthen dam and then scampering down to, uh, to see the falls. So we were very happy. You say this about 12 feet? Yeah, it does not look as tall in this photograph, but it's a, it's a full 12 footer. So this is Cedar Lake Falls. And we were very happy. Of course, we went on a day where it, it rained the day before. So that's always good. The really, the easiest way to get to this one is to go I-35 south to the Lone Elm exit, which is kind of the last Olathe exit. And then it is not very far at all to the north off of Lone Elm. And since this was last week, this concludes our waterfalls. One more thing to say about this falls. It was not on, we did not notice it on any of the websites of the 10 best waterfalls or 20 best waterfalls or not to miss waterfalls in Kansas. We just happened to hear about it. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, how did, how did this escape our notice? So, you know, this is the, I don't know, I, I'll call it a hidden gem. It's also convenient for all of us. So I encourage you all to take a look at it. And it's one of the falls that comes off of, uh, from Cedar Creek. So that's nice. So that is our waterfalls. We do hope to, uh, to get out this spring where maybe there's gonna be some more water. And, and if we get shots, maybe we can uh, 
and go further away from home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's Turkey Falls again. Yeah. All right. Any any comments or questions? This is so great. Thank you, Libby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yep. Libby, Li Libby I, I think I missed it. Where was that first waterfall located? The one that the professional photographer that took the picture of? That, that was the Crather Creek Falls, sometimes oh. called Chase Lake Falls. That's that's near Cottonwood Falls. Okay, that's the one. Okay, Crather Creek. Thank you. Strong city Cottonwood. If you go back to St. Joe, take the trolley tour of St. Mm -hmm. Joe and okay. Go see the uh, museum for Schind Schindler. Schindler? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, message in a jar. That's in, that's in St. Joe? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Not in St. Joe, it's in Fort Scott. Jeez. Uh, oh, Fort Scott, <laughs> okay. Small, well, just a small little brain. <laughs> <laughs> But then yes, yeah, take the trolley tour and go to the museum. St. <laughs> Joe, go to the psychiatric museum. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't isn't there isn't there a Walter Cronkite museum there as well? Now that I don't know. There are lots of things to, to see in St. Joe. I was yeah. sure. Yeah, in St. Joe or Fort Scott. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Oh. Okay. <laughs> mentioned Saint Somebody Joe. was telling us on one of our discussions, I think, that they had gone up to St. Joe and spent the night and found lots of things to do in St. Joe. Really? But if you go to Fort Scott and you take the trolley tour, they will show you these two mansions built side by side, and you need to go there and have lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they have they have the oldest running, oldest working the uh, theater in the country, I believe. Are we talking about Fort Scott? Now we're back to Fort Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that where the guy that still has uh, a Kodak processing mechanism? The you know where he can develop Kodak film, like Kodak uh, Kodak sixty four. It could be. Yeah, I think he bought up the. Or he, he keeps it going where they can process that film. That you mentioned St. Joseph reminds me of one other really interesting thing about that town. There are a there is what they call Museum Hill, which is a district, and there are literally hundreds of Victorian type homes and near mansions, and it's it's real eerie because most of them are boarded up. But it's it. What occurred to me was why aren't these being gentrified and rehabbed? Mm -hmm. Because they're not they're not falling down, but it's like they are they're sealed, waiting for that day to come. And it is just amazing how many of these really uh, amazing architectural examples are there on Museum Hill in St. Joe mm -hmm. in St. Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Museum Hill. Okay. Thank you. The place that Helen referenced, that was Fort Scott though, where the old, there are a couple of buildings and something about a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. What's the name of the restaurant? Do you remember? Oh, heavens, no. That's why I told you to take the <laughs> trolley tour. They'll tell you. <laughs> Wasn't one of them a bed and breakfast, Helen? Pardon me? Isn't one of them a bed and breakfast? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're side by side. There's a bed right. and breakfast. Right. And right. And parents built one for their kid mm -hmm. side by side. One of them is a restaurant. The other one is a bed and breakfast. Yep. They let us take a tour through their bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. there were I've heard about the, um, the trolley tour down there. We've never done that. I also heard mm -hmm. that at least they used to pre COVID days used to have a, like a Christmas festival decorated in the houses. You know, and you could take I think they, that. I think they decorate the fort. I think there's a candlelight tour of the fort at Christmas time. Oh, okay. But I don't know what else, but yeah. I don't think the Kodak place you were talking about processing film is in Parsons, Kansas. Oh, okay. 
Oh. That's a place that they've done it forever and ever, and they finally closed it down, except for a little bit. I don't think the Fort Scott trolley tour is going right now because I checked on it a couple weeks ago because we were going to go down there. And I think it's not going at the moment because of COVID. Oh. But it is worth it. And they have a national cemetery there too. Which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had a big, a big plant there where they made bricks like for paving streets. So there are still brick streets in Fort Scott right. as well. Um, it's a cool little town. It is. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember Bill Lamb? That's where he was born and raised. In oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't know that either. I didn't either, except I was talking to him one day, and he said something about Fort Scott, Kansas. And I said, well, did you live there? And he said, I was born there. And I said, well, I was born down in Pittsburgh. So we were close <laughs> together. <laughs> All fun. <laughs> Well, it's been fun. Thank you, Libby. Well, thank, thank you, you, Libby. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Jonathan, did you record Mondays? Uh, yes, yes. I just haven't got it posted. That, that, that's okay. I just, I, I forgot to go and I'd like to see the pictures. That's. I actually record all these. I just uh, have to get around to editing them. <laughs> yeah, somebody else asked about Monday's presentation too. So. Yeah. Yeah. We um, might have to keep that one going. Yeah. Yeah. I think there were too many pictures on Monday. We needed a few more pictures and uh, more stories from people. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun to see the pictures. So. Well, well, fun was just watching everybody try to remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I I'm bet. not the only one that's having trouble with that. <laughs> we did pretty well. <laughs> And what was funny is that when um, Dave and John and I looked at them first, there were some people I said, I know that person. I can't think of their name. And then during the session, I actually remembered it. It came back. So <laughs> some of those pathways are still there. Just <laughs> <a little. laughs> we, we don't exactly look like we used to either. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> well, I sent Linda her picture from that day. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was you. It was her. <laughs> By the way, Jonathan, thank you for all the editing of these that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we couldn't do yes, all of this you. without you, but <laughs> no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, oh, keeping us afloat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Martin, Libby. That uh, you've given us several places to go explore now when it mm -hmm. gets better weather. Yes. Yeah. Are you aware of an organization called the Kansas Explorers Club? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. She's the one that's written the book about what to see in every little town in Kansas. And the, the idea is to support local small towns and, you know, eat there and buy stamps at the post office and everything. It's, so it's a thick book. The second edition is quite thick and it, it just takes you all over the state, every little thing you wanted to know about these little towns. Oh, and, that's kind um, of fun. You, they send out a newsletter if you want to belong, and these people do quests. So they go to one cemetery in each county, or they buy a hamburger at each town. And um, it's, you know, for our situation with COVID, oh, it's, yeah. it's really a fun little thing oh. to mm -hmm. read about. Is that the name of the book? Uh, let me, I, I think I can put my hands on the book, book here if you. It's just something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. There's also a, uh, a newsletter that comes out, I don't know, two, three times a week. And I'll, I'll post it up to the Facebook page. But it's called Only in Kansas. Yeah. And There's it, a website. Ah, Kansas Guidebook. Kansas Guidebook, too. And it's uh, Marcy Penner, I think, is the... You know, 4,500 attractions, 843 eateries. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know her name from somewhere. I've met her. Yeah, it's the Explorers Club, and this is the second edition of the book. Um, I mean, literally, every little town, they've got some crossing wow. or something to do or see wow. or whatever. Wow. I think that's cool. I mean, you can buy the book, but you can also belong to the group. Oh, nice. 
Mm-hmm. But do, do they list uh, waterfalls? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. When Mark and I started our journey, we just said, okay, waterfalls give us a reason and a place to mm-hmm. go. Uh-huh. Right. Just a way to get out. <laughs> That's exactly the idea, exactly. but they... They do have WPA projects. There's a whole list of them. Wow. So, you know, <laughs> churches, whatever. Anyway. Some of you have sure. referenced the website only in your state.com. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's a drop down menu and you can pick whatever state you'd like to know about. And you get something. Uh, I get Kansas and Wyoming. And so there's something about each state every day. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a cool website. I like it. I do Kansas and Hawaii. Maybe I'll get back to <laughs> it. I don't know where to go in Hawaii. So. 